Hello, everybody. I would like to welcome you to today's webinar, Vision Systems Designers Dilemma, Build versus Buy. My name is Pia Burgmeier. I am responsible for our events at Framos, and I will be your moderator for today's event. The presentation is scheduled to take approximately 45 minutes and will be followed by a 15 minute Q&A session. Whenever you have a question during the presentation, please type it in the Q&A window and we will do our best to answer it during the Q&A portion at the end of the webinar. You can download a PDF of today's presentation on the bar at the right side. There's also a survey at the end of the presentation, so please take a few minutes and give us your feedback. With that, I would like to introduce to you our presenter. Darren Bessette. He's our category manager devices at Framos. Just Thank few, you very much. Ah, sorry, just a few words to Darren. So Darren um, has a degree in computer systems engineering from Carlton University. He majored in low-level software engineering and signal processing. This field of study allowed him to work in several companies doing embedded software device driver development and image processing. He has been creating, developing and supporting vision solutions for over 20 years. And the last four years has been the frame of starting as manager of engineering services and then moving to his new role as category manager devices. All this experience provides him with a unique perspective when working with customers who are looking to develop a new vision system. This has allowed him to help many clients understand the challenges and the benefits of building or buying components of a vision system over the years. His knowledge and experience has touched all aspects of vision, including software and hardware design, image quantification, calibration and processing, optics and lighting. And at this time, I would like to turn the microphone over to Darren to begin the presentation. Thank you very much, Pia. I'm glad everyone could attend today's session. I'm happy to be here and present you this wonderful topic. So what I'll do is I'll change myself as the presenter and I'll start sharing my desktop. All right. So right now you should be seeing my presentation. <clears throat> so this presentation, I'm going to walk you through the biggest question probably many of you have right now, which is, should I build my own vision system or should I buy it? There's several different factors you need to consider when looking at this, and I'm gonna walk you through some of those. There's several different aspects of <clears throat> things you need to look at, both from a historical perspective and from a market evolution and technology trends that are happening that are influencing this decision that you're currently making. And what I'm gonna do during this uh, 45 minute talk is help walk you through some of those questions that you probably already have right now and help guide you to those answers and maybe come up with a, a best path forward for you to decide whether or not it makes sense for you to completely build your system, completely buy your system, or maybe a combination in between. So first thing we need to understand is do you see yourself in which category? Are you a complete vision system designer or are you someone who is looking to purchase your system? The reason why this is important is that we wanna make sure that we address each one of those specific needs. For this particular presentation though, I'm gonna focus primarily on the vision system designer because I only have so much time and I really need to, to go down into deep detail from that perspective. So we're gonna focus on the opportunities that are available for a vision system designer what questions are being asked and how they can influence your decision on whether you should be building that system or completely customizing it to suit your needs, or sorry, buying it off the shelf. So as a designer, there are many factors that are influencing your decision whether you should be building or buying a system. Probably one of the biggest ones that has the major, biggest impact on what it is is the improvements with CMOS technology, specifically CMOS imaging technology, and how it's actually replacing CCD in many applications. 
The quality that's coming out, the speed and the performance you have with these CMOS-based sensors are actually allowing them to compete head-on and in, in some cases even replace CCD technology in many applications that are traditionally seen. Also, it's opening up new opportunities that were once not seen before that are allowing this technology to open up more vision markets that I've never seen before. As a result, it's really influencing your decision on whether you should build or buy your application. Before we start talking about the whole uh, decision on what you do, you need to understand what are the factors that are influencing this decision right now. The market is evolving from uh, the traditional machine vision markets to markets that may not have been more respect may not have been as receptive to traditional vision and are opening up new opportunities for vision system designers to create new products that address these new markets these trends are creating a lot of doubt uh, in vision system designers as to does it make sense for them to completely build a system or maybe buy something off the shelf and i'm going to walk through many of these trends as we move forward one of the biggest trends we're seeing right now is really the evolution of imaging technology. So 50 years ago, uh, back in the days when the first cameras were produced, the broadcast cameras, they were using analog tubes uh, and using recording devices to, to, to record that video and present it to the users. It was a very expensive system. As a result, over the evolution of about 30 years ago, CCD technology has completely replaced that technology. And now you're seeing uh, devices that are using CCDs and because of these CCDs, they've opened up more opportunities for people to use these devices to be able to do more analytics and create that first ever vision system that is able to take the images and digitize it with a frame grabber and be able to produce uh, analytics based on those images. Now, what we're seeing in the last 10 years with the evolution of cell phones that have really been driving the CCD market for small, robust, and even high-quality images, we're now seeing many of these CMOS-based technologies now replacing these older CCD technologies in these applications, but also opening up new ones because of the low cost and their high speed and the fact that they can do more onboard processing. So as a result, you're seeing a humongous shift uh, from the old days of tubes and analog devices to now going into less CCDs and now into more digitized devices such as CMOS. One of the things that is really demonstrates uh, why this is happening is uh, the survey that Framos produces every year. Every year we ask the same question and every year the trend is continuing on. We ask our customers, what are your plans currently for using CMOS and CCD technologies and how will they change over the next two years? As you can see here, the evolution is constantly moving forward to using more CMOS-based te technologies and replacing existing CCD ones. So that trend is definitely there and we're seeing it more proliferate more and more. And this is becoming more evident with major companies, major imaging companies like Sony, who have completely decided to reduce and eliminate all the production of CCD-based technologies and replace them with CMOS-based. So they have come on board with the whole market trend. So therefore, we're seeing a lot more higher quality CMOS-based sensors that are coming to the market and replacing these existing CCD technologies. Another thing that's been influencing uh, the evolution and some of the questions you have is the fact that data interfaces are becoming more standardized and have evolved and become more efficient, more powerful, and faster to be able to manage the data that's coming off these technologies. So these data interfaces have higher speeds and are able to uh, uh, basically take advantage of these sensors, these CMOS-based sensors that have higher readout speeds and higher resolutions and be able to transmit that data efficiently across the board to a host PC. Not only that, a lot of these interfaces are becoming more standardized, which means there's less need to have customized hardware, customized software to use them, and therefore making them a lot more robust, but not only that, making them a lot more efficient and a lot more cost-effective when implementing into your own solution. As a result of these standards, 
not only is it a good thing that you are having lower costs, but it also creates more competition for these camera manufacturers and these vision system designers as a result because their competitors are also taking advantage of this, therefore driving down the cost of these systems. But at the same time, it's forcing more power, more performance in the systems, all to the benefit of the end customer. Another thing that's influencing this decision is the fact that processes are becoming more efficient and more powerful. As we all know, Moore's law of technology and processing power, you can see it evident in the, uh, the processes we're getting now. They're becoming more efficient, faster, more capable of doing more processing on board. But not only that, they're becoming smaller and more efficient at doing what they're doing. So. Now we're used to have a host PC or able to get a chip that is able to do much of that processing on board, allowing for smaller, more compact, more powerful devices to be created with less need to have it tethered to a PC to do that backend processing. As a result, a lot more data can be pushed around the system more efficiently and processed much better with only the results being transmitted across to the cloud or to other based devices. So a lot more edge processing is happening, making it much more efficient and allowing them to leverage maybe some lower cost data interfaces that allow just for that trickling of data to go out and therefore reducing the overall system costs of the end, end vision system. Another thing that's uh, making a big difference too is the fact that the computer vision market is growing in general. You're seeing a lot more opportunities to open up into new markets and existing markets are becoming much larger as more and more uh, applications are calling for and using uh, imaging within their system. As a result of this proliferation of vision, you're getting to get more applications that are being able to go into markets that were probably once unattainable or unrealistic to use vision in the past, opening up new opportunities to create vision systems. So this is creating more questions and more doubt from that vision system designer as to whether they should get on board and build their own system or buy something they can leverage off the shelf. One of the probably most prolific examples of how a market has opened up and been so receptive to vision is in the self-driving car market. Many, many automotive companies, and even some that are traditional and non-traditional ones like Google, Uber, and Apple, are getting full in onto the self-driving car market. And they're looking at purchasing using vision as their primary source for allowing them to get a sense for where the car is going and be able to do the analytics in order to control that vehicle through the maze of obstacles that it faces. Not only that, automobiles in general, even the traditional ones, are more and more receptive to using vision within their systems as an assistance to the driver. You're seeing a lot more cameras that are being used for backup cameras or full view cameras of the vehicle to allow the drivers to better navigate with their controls to be able to see everything around them from bumper to bumper, tire to tire. And we're also seeing a general trend that these vehicles will now become so autonomous that this market is gonna become so disruptive that it will essentially replace the need to have a manual driver at the wheel. So what does the future of vision systems hold? What we're seeing is more opportunities to use and utilize vision in more areas that were once never thought of in the past. A lot more is being able to be done on, on chip, either near the, the sensor or on the sensor itself, that allows for more processing to be done with less need to transmit the data across a bus or to a host PC. As a result, this is really blurring the lines of whether or not you should build or buy your system. There's a lot of opportunities abound, but it's really hard to navigate which road to take. So you need to really make a decision as to, is this really too much of a good thing? With so many options available, none are perfect. A lot of vision systems designers have this huge dilemma as to decide which technology, which, uh, which sensor, which product, which feature is the best to use for them 
And how do they incorporate it into the vision system? A lot of the system component designers that are building products now also have their own challenges in the sense that they're trying to tackle many markets with the same product and trying to create more generic products that are feature rich to address these larger markets. However, may limit their usefulness in your specific application. As a result, it's really forcing you to reevaluate whether it makes sense to have these more generic devices in your system or create something that is more specific to your needs. As an engineering manager, you're constantly looking out for how do you improve your product and how do you make the best use of your resources. Not only that, your competitors are becoming more aggressive and, are, and your market is demanding a lot more from you and from your team that you need to really evaluate quickly how do you develop your product and what do you leverage that's already existing and built and what do you want to build on your own? Where do your core competencies lie? So not only that, the, the, the market itself has a higher requirement. So as you go into these new markets, the the, the minimum playing field to, to achieve is getting much more difficult with more requirements and the barriers to entry are being reduced. So therefore, your competitive edges are becoming less and less easy to, to identify and differentiate yourselves against these competing markets. So it's becoming way too hard to keep track of all these options. You're constantly trying to educate your customers on the new technologies and the technology advances while you're learning them yourselves. Not only that, in some cases, some of your customers are actually edu educating you on these advancements and that they want to use and build into their own systems. So it really comes to a point as to what you do. How do you manage this decision and make these very fundamental questions as to how do you proceed forward with your vision system? Before we go into that, we really need to step back and look at the evolution of the camera. Back in the old days of you know, analog tubes and tape recorders, there was no need to worry about a lot of the things we're seeing now. With the introduction of CCD-based technologies, really allowed for the first time to create these vision systems that were able to capture the images and be able to process them in almost real time to be able to do analytics and be able to come up with that first vision system to be able to do those analysis on the, the application itself. As this has evolved, now CMOS is actually creating a fully digital environment that allows for self-contained systems that are providing amazing images that are easily pushed around the system for further processing and makes this whole system a lot easier to use. Another aspect that's making things easier is the technical barriers to produce these types of products have greatly been reduced. You're seeing a lot more chip-to-chip chip, chip -chip communications such as MIPI that are allowing designs to become much easier. It's almost like using Lego blocks where you can take a sensor and plug it into a processing device and use the communication such as a MIPI interface to be able to allow them to communicate together. Not only that, more system on chips are allowing to do more on chip pixel correction or more processing and encryption or encoding that allow the system to be much less complex than what they have been overall. Not only that, are also providing a lot more features than has ever been seen in a tightly controlled uh, package. Along with that, with the standardization of these data interfaces, it also minimizes the complexity of building the device. A lot less software development is needed now to be able to create customized drivers and customized software to control these, as these standards oftentimes come with their own class drivers that are reusable and provide a very common interface that customers can integrate against which frees up a lot of development time and makes it easier for customers to adopt these technologies into their working systems. Unfortunately, though, it also opens up a whole new market of competitors that will also allow you to compete against them. So your differentiation now becomes much more difficult to show to these customers as you see more of these evolutions and technologies taking hold, but also opened up the opportunity to have a lot more customers as you can also gain more market share from your competitors. Another unforeseen benefit 
to a, a lot of the evolution is the cost of machine, precision machine work has dramatically reduced in a lot of these areas. This has opened up a lot more opportunity to have customized enclosures that can really work under extreme conditions, such as working in a desert sun or in extreme cold weather, or actually working in areas where they may have like caustic washdowns. A lot of these newer enclosures have tools and, and other things that can actually provide heaters when it, it's cold outside or have ways of dissipating the heat from inside much more efficiently than ever before. Also, they're more, a lot better sealed that allows them to work in more dirtier environments where there could be a lot more splashing of water or dirt and debris, allowing them to work in, in environments that were once unable to in the past due to the size and nature of the precision metalwork. Another thing that has opened up opportunities is the ability of having these single board computers, these low cost computers that are small and compact, allowing them to create more of a, an autonomous system without the need to having a tethered computer. A lot of these devices have miniaturized the overall vision system, which is allowed to save costs and reduce the need of having a separate PC or having a whole bunch of cabling running through a factory floor in order to connect these devices together and do all the processing that is needed. You now have a lot more edge processing that can now happen with these additional processing units that are near and very close to where the images are being taken. This allows for a lot more streamlined processing and allows for more onboard processing with less need to have a higher end uh, data interface coming out of the products. Not only that, image data has now just evolved to be simply data. We're able to now take advantage of a lot more techniques to use in processing the data because now we're treating this data less as image data and more as just straight data. This is allowing us to do, use a lot more tools and functions that were once unattainable in here in this type of environment and be able to process that data much more efficiently, much more readily in these environments, opening up more opportunities to use them in more applications. Not only that, combine all these advancements with the interoperability of the vision system between other devices that are being utilized through a lot more efficient communication protocols that are more advanced and able to allow these devices to communicate within themselves without having to have a host process controlling that inner communication. This makes the whole inner system a lot more efficient and allows for easily signaling, easily, easily signaling between these devices that allow them to interact and control each other's movements and characteristics to be able to provide a completely autonomous system. So some of you are actually in the room already, have already made a decision or are looking already to build your own business system from the ground up. CMOS technology is actually making this a lot easier decision to make because of how easy it is to implement on a chip. Plus, if when you add on the quality that CMOS provides with respect to its predecessor, the CCDs, you're getting a lot more opportunity, a lot more speed, a lot more resolution than you never had before that allows this decision to become much easier to make. However, before you jump into it, it's not as easy as it looks. CMOS still has a lot of challenges that need to be overcome before you can properly address and implement it into your technology. Some of the big things that are there is that there's a lot more registers in a CMOS sensor that need to be program properly in order to get the right quality image and set up the sensor correctly to give the data you need in order to achieve the results you're looking for. Also, many of these sensors use very high speed and complex interfaces such as LVDS, MIPI, or SLVS EC that require high speed signaling and high speed transceivers that are make this design a lot more difficult and a lot more challenging from a cost perspective as you need these more advanced tools and systems to be able to do that. But not only that, make the, the integration onto a BCP, PCB much more difficult as you now have to ensure you're properly lining the, the line matching the signals coming out of the, the sensor 
to the end device properly to make sure there's no reflections or that the signaling is out of, out of sync with the clock timing. Therefore, the challenges from a PCB designer become much greater when using a CMOS technology because you have a lot more things you need to think about when doing that design and that layout of these devices. Another thing that's making it a lot more challenging is many of these CMOS devices are based on cell phone technology, which have requirements for small size with small pixels. This can be very challenging from an optics perspective to be able to find optics that will properly align to the sensor, to these pixels, to be able to get the right quality of image that you need for your application. Another benefit that CMOS is now bringing to the table is the fact that we're now seeing sensors that are backside illuminated. When you look at the predecessor of the frontside illuminated sensors, the fill factor of these sensors, the area in which it can actually capture light is very small, typically between 20 and 50 percent. This means that it requires a lot more light to come in to actually see and get an image out of it. Not only that, it needs to rely on these micro lenses to redirect that light coming in into the sensitive area of the pixel in order to be able to capture that image and be able to get a good image out of it. These micro lenses, because of how much they need to work, have smaller chief ray angles that make it a lot more difficult to use any lens on the front of it, but also have a lot more crosstalk that are possible within these sensors, making for the, a poor quality image that you receive in the end. What's happening now is we're seeing a lot more sensors that are becoming more backside illuminated. And a lot of this is being driven by Sony with their technology. And the, the benefits of the backside illumination is the fact that you now have the the sensitive area of the sensor much closer to these micro lenses. And thereby the micro lenses don't need to work as hard to be able to push that data to that sensitive area. Not only that, the, 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 the fill factor of these sensors are much larger because now they have a lot more area in which they can absorb the, the photons coming in and be able to translate that into electrons. This makes for less crosstalk and provides better performance specifically in the shorter wavelengths, like in the, the deep purple, the ultraviolet deep purples and the blues. Sony's experience with CCDs has also allowed them to provide a lot more capabilities and translate some of that experience and knowledge into creating much better CMOS-based sensors. As a result, they've done a lot more features within these sensors that allow them to reduce the noise by doing the digitization directly at the pixel site, which minimizes the amount of noise that's accumulated because now the, the, the information is digitized immediately with less need to move along analog data that is more susceptible to accumulating noise. But not only that, it allows them to run these chips at a much faster speed now that the data is digitized. It also allows for larger resolutions. So the, the, the shift from CCD to CMOS has brought a lot of advantages that are now allowing you to take advantage of these CMOS sensors in more and more applications. From a camera designer who has been traditionally using CCDs, many of the tricks that you've used in the past cannot be easily used when using a CMOS sensor. Some of these techniques that used to take advantage of minimizing the noise and changing the way in which the, the data is uh, digitized cannot be used. Some of the things that were done is to, to minimize the noise. You had a lot more control over by controlling the behavior of how the CCD actually ran, whether it's from a timing perspective or turning off different sections of the CCD to minimize the amount of heat noise or other read noise that would be introduced into the image. You now do not have those same capabilities with a CMOS sensor. Also, you can't take advantage of cooling the sensor as much as you could to be able to minimize and extract that heat from the sensor to keep the noise low. Many of the reasons why this is happening is because the, in a CMOS sensor, a lot of the information is digitized so early in the process that there's very little influence that a system designer can do to minimize and, 
and reduce the introduction of that noise, other than starting with a high quality sensor that has to begin with very low noise performance. With less control, it makes it very difficult for that vision system to really provide any value add and show some of the, the, the features and the, 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 sorry, I'm losing my words now, to, to basically provide those capabilities that can help them exceed some of their competitors and show off their, their, their value add to their customers. But with that, some of the benefits of having CMOS far outweigh the difficulties that a camera designer used to have with CCD technology. The main thing is being the fact that you can now eliminate a lot of noise. There's a lot less need to have to be an analog designer and be able to understand how that is done and how you digitize the information and how you minimize the, the susceptibility of getting EMI noise into that analog circuitry. Also, because these CMOS sensors can run so fast, there's no need to have sensors like in CCDs with multi-taps and have to be able to balance those taps with any image to make sure you have a nice uniform image. Many of the artifacts that you see in CCD-based have all been removed with CMOS technology as this technology is not susceptible to things like blooming and smearing that are more common in a CCD environment. And finally, you don't need to have engineers that are both understand uh, analog design and digital design because these CMOS sensors are all digital based and therefore you can really not have to have that experience or that knowledge to be able to do it. And especially when it comes to the fact that they're already digitized so you're now able to get these faster readout speeds that are come with very low noise. So with all this, a lot more designers are looking to use these devices in more and more and starting to build their own devices. The advancements in the CMOS technology have opened up this opportunity for them to be able to leverage and be able to not have to rely on a component manufacturer for these devices and allow them to look at taking more control of their design. This allows them to have a lot more influence on the overall end system, but also keep their costs low. But is this really the right choice for you? So before we go into designing and developing your new system, we should need to look at several different factors that you need to evaluate whether or not you have the capabilities, the knowledge, and the experience to really build your own system. What I have here is a, a temple, and you can imagine your vision system as a temple, where your core competencies provide the support structure for your vision system. And the columns are the different steps and questions you need to ask yourself as to whether or not you want to take these items on yourself or outsource them to somebody who has a lot more experience and knowledge with building them to be able to then build in your end vision system. What you need to do is looking at each one of these pillars, you need to evaluate and see what you're willing to take on and what you're willing to outsource in order to achieve your end vision system. So I have a lot of pillars here, a lot of pillars here, and by no means are there all of them, but it's really just an example of the things you need to look at when looking at deciding whether or not it makes sense for you to build your vision system or outsource it. I will spend a bit of time on a few of these. Uh, we're gonna, because of the presentation, I can't go through all of them. So I'm gonna focus on a few of them being the technical risk and reward, the IP and competitive edge, time and total cost of ownership. So, the first pillar we're gonna look at are technical risks and rewards. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna evaluate it from an example of whether CMOS or CCD uh, has better influence and whether or not it makes more sense to build versus buying that product. In the first pillar, uh, we're gonna, we see that when it comes to technical risks and rewards, CCD is a lot more difficult to implement. However, the images that are provided are by far very good and allow for high quality images 
However, CDMOS is actually coming very close to achieving those results. But in some cases, CCDs do outweigh when there is a need to go into really long exposures or have to minimize the, 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 the noise in it because you have a lot more control over the whole digitization and influences of the noise it has within the images. So in some cases, it makes sense to use CCD versus CMOS. Some of the things when it comes to technical risk, when it comes to building versus buying, when you're building a product, uh, oftentimes you have to go through multiple iterations. You also have to worry about various different components and making sure those components fit together. But not only that, the life cycle of those components are important depending on what your life cycle your product is. So you're always having to manage the life cycle of the products going in to be able to understand whether or not you need to evolve or constantly have a program in place to, in order to stay ahead of the evolution of those components and mitigate them should they become end of life. Not only that, if you don't have the expertise in-house to be able to build your own product, if you don't have that hardware experience, it may make more sense to actually buy these components offhand and do the software development yourself. So therefore, there are situations where it makes sense that you need to buy these components to be able to get to market much more quickly and be able to implement these devices more efficiently while using your resources to their full competencies in other areas of the development of the vision system. So an example of this, um, some of the things you need to think of when, when looking at whether it makes sense to use CCD versus CMOS is do the camera manufacturers allow you to build these devices and extend from them? So do you wanna have those core competencies in-house to be able to build your own cameras or do you wanna rely on camera manufacturers and extend them, extend what their offerings are to better suit what you need? Some of the things that are also help you in making that decision is the fact that there's development kits for these interfaces that allow you to easily build up and create your own vision system. However, in doing so, you need to have a lot of experience in hardware techniques such as uh, soldering these, these grid arrays that are uh, these high volume grid arrays that are on these sensors and also being able to do multi-layer PCBs. And you need to have that experience in-house over the longevity of your product. So it's things that you need to understand whether or not you have to have those core competencies in-house or are you willing to outsource them to a third party and just buy those components off the shelf. Also, to be able to get the right image, you need to be able to understand all the aspects of what it takes to produce a high quality image. Do you need to do color debayering? Do you need to do additional image processing to manipulate the image to get that information out? So if you really don't have experience in these areas, this is where you may want to think of buying that vision component off the shelf and bringing it in-house and developing it and building your application based on that. Another aspect that you need to think about when looking at building a vision system is what is your competitive edge and what IP do you want to keep in-house? There's a lot of things that are needed in order to build a vision system that in some cases gives you the competitive edge. If you're building your own CCD-based technology and you're able to manipulate the sensor and get as much information out of it as possible, that is something that your competitors can't do, then it makes sense to keep that in-house. When it comes to using more of a CMOS-based te technology, it opens up a lot more opportunities to use a lot more features that you don't need to build yourself and you can take advantage of. However, it also exposes you as your competitors have access to that same technology and are able to do similar things. So the competitive edge that you now have becomes greatly reduced when going into technologies such as CMOS that are feature rich coming out of the gate. Another thing that you need to think about is how much do you need to understand of how the image is being generated? It makes sense that if you have an area where you need to be very competitive and time to market has a strong influence that you won't want to look to buy more components on the shelf that are ready built and you're able to incorporate almost immediately as it will reduce your risk when it comes to development and production. But also not only that adds value to the image. Uh, 
it also allows you to rely on the economies of scale that your 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 end manufacturer is using because they're building these products to to fit a mass market so you're able to leverage, leverage the fact that this company is able to reduce their cost of manufacturing and pass those costs on to you however when you build it you own a lot more of that IP and you have a lot more control of it. Therefore, it makes it very difficult for your competition to duplicate. It also reduces your build cost because now you have a lot more control over the bomb of your product, which also allows you to improve the quality and have a lot more control over those aspects of it. So some of the things you need to think about when looking at your vision system and whether or not you want to build versus buy when it comes to the IP and competitive uh, advantages is to understand whether or not you have control over the path of your development. And can you dictate when your product can be released or is the market actually pulling you to have it available sooner than you're able to build it yourselves? Also, you need to understand the evolution of your product. How do you want it to evolve and how do you want to maintain that evolution moving forward? You also want to understand what are your competitive advantages are and how do you incorporate that into the building of your product that allows you to be able to have a lot more control over its development. And also you need to look at your engineering workforce. Do you have the resources to do and take on the full complete build of these products or do you lack some of the core competencies needed in order to be able to do that and therefore it makes sense to to offload that to a third party so if these factors are important to you then you really need to think that you want to build your own product Another thing that I've mentioned a few times throughout the presentation is the time. It needs to un that this is probably one of the big factors that you need to consider when looking at whether you want to build or buy your system. When you compare CMOS and CCD, naturally when you're looking to implement a CCD-based technology, there's a lot more time spent with improving the image quality. But once you get that image, and the quality is there, it is something that you can really promote for your product as a way of differentiating yourselves in the market. CMOS technology, on the other hand, is really easy to implement, and you can leverage a lot of the features that are provided by these, these sensors to make your design much more efficient, much more powerful, and there's a lot more tools available that allow you to quickly and easily take a sensor and development into your system. Now, when it comes to building versus buying, the key thing there is when do you need to have this product available? Being able to buy products off the shelf or buy components off the shelf allow more parallelization of your engineering resources because now you can buy evaluation kits that allow you to understand how the, the, the sensor technology is working, which allows your software team to be able to start working while your hardware engineers are designing the end product using the, the finalized customized solution. However, when you're just looking to build your own product, you have a lot more flexibility with its design and how it looks and how it works and how it's going to be implemented in the end solution. Unfortunately, though, by building your own product, you have to wait for all these key components to be developed and implemented before you can start adding the value. By buying these products off the shelf, you're able to start working now and start building your end application and be able to focus on where you're adding value to these products. Not only that, when you, you're buying off the shelf, you can be a lot more camera agnostic, which means you have a lot more options available to you to be able to pick and choose from various different manufacturers and leverage the key features and, and benefits that each one provides to you. However, if you're building yourself, you're relying primarily on your engineering team to be able to provide these features and maintain those competencies and be able to be on the forefront of understanding where these technologies are moving forward and be able to implement that in future designs. So when thinking about time as a discussion point, you really need to understand, is it worth the wait to buy, the, sorry, is it worth the wait to build your product? Do you really want to keep these core competencies moving forward? And do you have time to build up these core competencies within your teams? 
You need to understand what the value add that your system is providing and does it really require it to have the, the competencies to be able to build the, end, the small vision component that you need in order to complete your full system. With all, all these camera and camera manufacturers available to you, you don't need to really wait to have them to start implementing. You can leverage their capabilities, their technology to be able to pull products that are off the shelf, that are ready to use and have been fully tested and vetted so that it makes it a lot easier so that you're not just debugging your application, but you're not, and you don't have to debug the camera portion as well. So if this is kind of where you're looking at and whether or not your current market window really defines where you're going, you may want to think about buying a component, but actually doing a bit of customizations to it. Then the next last uh, pillar we're going to look at is really the, the total cost of ownership. You really need to look at what the overall cost is, not just from a design development stage, but from a maintenance and overall product life cycle. When it comes to CCD, the life cycle of CCDs, it's looking to be coming to an end. Um, more and more applications are using, are having a need for less and less CCDs, and therefore the sensor manufacturers are producing less and less and not evolving them moving forward. What we're seeing is a lot more CMOS technologies are the way they're moving forward. They're becoming much easier, all the digital systems, and they make it easier to maintain, therefore a lower cost of ownership. There's less likely that a product's gonna come back due to a system failure in a CMOS-based device versus a CCD-based device. Also, when it looks at when you look at the, the overall cost of building a product, CCDs tend to be naturally higher to implement and design than a, a fully digital system like a CMOS because a lot more is done on chip, and these chips are much easier to produce at a lot more cost-effective way. Also, when it comes to building versus buying, when you're looking at how the total cost of ownership is, when you're a small company and you don't have a lot of resources, carrying inventory can be very difficult. This way you can leverage the buying power of your manufacturers and buy their products and allow them to provide cost savings that can then be filtered into your product. And you don't have to carry as much inventory. And therefore you can do more of a just-in-time type uh, inventory strategy that allows you to get the product out the door much more efficiently and keep more of the, the money in pocket when you're cash strapped. However, if you're buying, you're only paying for what you're using. So now you don't have to buy a product that has a lot more features and capabilities you will not use, and therefore you're not paying more for a system you don't need. Uh, you also have to worry about the cost of having to do the manufacturing of the products. So having to set up a whole manufacturing system, doing the QA and the QC infrastructure, and also doing the additional support required to when it comes to building your complete vision system. So there's the whole cost of all that ownership, plus the maintenance and the overall longevity of the product you need to factor in when it comes to the total cost of ownership. So when it comes to looking at discussing what makes sense for you when it comes to building versus buying, you need to really understand how the cost of building this product from an inventory perspective, a maintenance and a resource and a life cycle management fits into your overall strategy and your overall finances of the company. You need to be able to leverage a lot of the existing products that allow you to keep some of those out-of-pocket expenses lower by not having to carry a lot more inventory due to lead times of particular components that are extremely long. So you have to buy a lot more components in advance in order to align it with the delivery structure of your customers. Also, you need to look at uh, the cost and how, how long it takes to bring these products in and how long it takes to design and develop these products. So if you're looking towards going to more of a high volume production, it makes a lot more sense to be starting to think about building the product because you have a lot more control over the cost and you can reduce a lot of that by leveraging that uh, capability of being able to purchase in higher volumes and minimize the amount of uh, additional costs required in order to, to keep the products price low. 
So now that we talked about this, we need to really decide how we move forward. We need to understand how do I build my own vision system? What are the things I need to think about when I'm building my vision system? So what are the requirements? What do I need from a, a functional spec? And then I need to go out and understand how do I put all the pieces and components together? What do I build and what do I buy? And how does it all fit together? And how do I leverage my own internal resources in order to maintain and develop this product and evolve it over time? And then how do I keep the product moving forward and how do I develop my roadmaps and my development cycles in order to meet my market demands and my market requirements moving forward while still leveraging existing and new technologies and incorporate it into my systems. So I'm just going to walk through an example of how you can own your own vision system. So I'm going to talk about a stereo vision system uh, and we're going to kind of walk through that how that would look. So in the first instance of your product, you have two cameras that are built on a bar. Because you're a small company, you don't have a lot of experience or the manpower to be able to develop your own vision system. So what you've done is you've gone out and purchased two cameras, fixed them to the pole at a specific distance, and you started writing your software based on that. As the product evolves and you're starting to see a lot more market acceptance, you now have incorporated those two separate distinct cameras into more components within an existing product, which is now like a two-headed camera. And as a result, you can do a lot more uh, features and benefits and add a lot more capabilities to this product while making the product more unique and less like you're buying somebody else's product to develop your own system. And then as it evolves even further, you're now able to have a lot more control over the features and capabilities of the product. So it allows you to do a lot more onboard processing within that, making it a lot more unique and less difficult for your competitors to replicate on their own. And then finally, you get to a point where now it's just a detector. So now the, the, the processing that's done on board does not require an external device or external user to be able to make these decisions all the decisions are on board with using edge technology, using onboard processors that are able to detect and fully automate the decision process all within the one product, that camera product that you designed. So here's an example of where you would actually build a product. So in this particular case, it's actually looking at a panoramic camera that's taking images possibly on a drone and providing the GPS location info to go with it. So the goal is to have a multi-sensor, single shot panoramic of a, of a site. So you have multiple cameras and you wanna be able to take them all at the same time, but also provide information associated with that. So the simplified pillar review is to be able to look at whether or not your engineering staff is capable. And in this case, you have engineering staff that is able to do it. The volume for this particular product that the market seems to bear is probably high enough in that 10,000 units a year. And you can also create the competitive edge by creating a unique solution and controlling your own IP. So in this particular case, you're going to look to purchasing the IP core to help with the image processing, but also allow it to align for a long-term plan of owning your own vision system. In a different case, we're going to look at how one would look at if you were to buy a particular product. In this particular case, it's a 3D photo booth. The customer in this case requires 60 simultaneous images in a three meter, uh, three meter cubed volume doing photogrammetry. The simplified pillar view is that it needs to be a really low cost solution because you're in a company that is being venture capitalized. So you need to be able to keep your cost low because it's, the money is tight at this point. Not only that, you need to present a proof of concept quickly to prove to these venture capitalists that the solution is viable. And not only that, you have to get to a quick time to market. As a result of this review, you now decide that it makes more sense to buy the cameras and build up your vision system to get that market feedback quickly. And to, not only that, but to justify external, to justify further funding and development to create this product to be more of your own at a future date. So to kind of give a sense for how Framos can then help you through this whole product lifecycle, 
this slide basically shows how we can help you with your evolution of your product and how the different components and different aspects and areas of this can really have a strong influence on how we can help. So we can help in a definition phase by helping with the product definition, giving you different pricing options. We can also work with you with from a build versus buy using many of our different components, whether it's full-blown cameras or sensors or somewhere in between. We also provide a lot of uh, design and development tools that help you test and implement and evaluate the, the products that are providing. So whether or not you're looking to evaluate a particular sensor in a specific environment, we provide a lot of the capabilities through EVB kits and sensor modules and our whole ecosystem of embedded vision allows you to basically do a lot more proof of concept testing and evaluate whether or not a particular sensor works well in your particular environment using a chosen processor. To, to then allow you to then create that product and see if it makes sense to go with these components. Once you're into more of a production and mass market, we can help with a lot of the supplier management. As a stocking supplier, we bring in a lot of inventory and help our customers mitigate that and have uh, areas within the world, uh, several different areas in the world, both North America and Europe, with stocking areas. So if you have production facilities in various different parts, you can still leverage the same company to be able to do this while supplying localized support and localized products for your developments. And finally, when it comes to actually I did this backwards, I should start with the ideas and concepts. We can also help with the detailed review and requirements and providing you with a lot of the feasibility studies uh, for your existing product or maybe even some of your future products. We also have a whole peer network of uh, partners that allow you to help evolve and expand your vision system, whether or not you want to take on some of these aspects or you're looking to have a partner help with some of the customizations that you're looking to do. So just to recap what we're talking about, the vision system market has evolved and is continually evolving where a lot more technology is coming into play that's allowing you to evaluate whether or not it makes sense to build or buy your vision system. You really need to look at the vision solution temple to see how it applies to your specific application, to see where it makes sense that you can leverage your core competencies or build new ones to be able to create your own vision system or where it makes sense to actually look to third-party applications or third-party companies to provide some of those components or most of those components to build your vision system. Finally, we've talked about how you can own your own vision system, how you can evolve a vision system that was looking to building, buying everything off the shelf to one that has a lot more ownership, that you're able to control a lot more and develop more and build your own system towards that evolution. So that concludes my presentation. I want to thank you very much for it. And I kind of ran a little bit out of time, but I'm going to take a few questions. Uh, so if you have questions, hopefully you've put them into the question area. I'm going to go check to see what questions we have available. All right. So first question I have is uh, what options are available when it comes to creating proof of concept and development type devices? So as I mentioned previous, uh, uh, Framos has really focused on creating an infrastructure where we have a lot of off-the-shelf components that allow you to evaluate and test many of the sensors and cameras we have from our suppliers. Not only that, we've created this, uh, I'll call it embedded vision ecostructure that allows you to pick and choose the various different sensors and allow you to plug them all together to build up a proof of concept system to really test the viability of using that particular sensor and that particular processor within your system. So as a result, you're able to really do a lot more analysis and understand exactly if these things make sense. But not only that, we have a whole partner network of, of companies that can help with a lot of the vision system development and allow you to pick and choose where you want to make your own IP or leverage the core competencies of another company and be able to take advantage of that. So I hope that answers the question. All right, one more question here. Sorry, let me just try to open it up. 
so the question I have is CMOS versus CCD. Uh, which CCD is better than CMOS from a signal noise perspective, hot pixels, and frame rates? So there's several different, that's a kind of a loaded question. It's really hard to say. So it really depends on what you're looking at. When it comes to CCD, where CCD has always excelled is in image performance. They have evolved and allowed for the larger fill factors within the sensors that allows it to capture a lot more photons and be able to convert those photons into electrons more efficiently. Therefore, allows for that conversion process to be most adapted for that particular application. Then with a proper design of the camera, you're then able to minimize the amount of noise that's then introduced through read and dark currents and other aspects like that to be able to get the highest performance image in the lowest light conditions. However, a lot more of these sensor technologies on CMOS have greatly improved the performance. And as a result, you're seeing a lot more of the CMOS-based cameras that are competing head-on with the CCD. And specifically, when I'm talking about CMOS, is really the backside illumination has really turned the market from how these sensors can compete head-on with CCDs. The fact that they have larger fill factors, deeper wells, less noise, and better performance when it comes to the gathering of light. So the micro lenses are smaller, the crosstalk is reduced. These allow for better color performance, better image quality with low noise, that it just makes sense in some cases to use CMOS technology. Also, it's getting harder and harder to find CCDs that match your requirements, both from a performance and a resolution perspective. So it's really hard to answer that question in a, in a simple answer because it really depends on what your application needs are. And for this reason, it's really important to talk to our team here at Framos because we can help guide you through that, that specific decision path for your specific application. So it's now 11 o'clock. I was hoping to get through a couple, or sorry, it's 11 o'clock on the East Coast. You may not be on the East Coast uh, of the US. Uh, but anyway, we're at the end of our one hour session. So I'm going to have to call it here right now. But I want to thank you very much for taking the time. And I'm now going to pass it on to Pia to, to provide some closing remarks. Great. Thank you, Darren. And thanks for attending. So I would like to direct you one last time back to our screen where you can find the presentation for download. Um, this webinar will also be on demand shortly if you would like to go back and watch any portion of this content again or share it with your colleagues. And as mentioned before, so please attend our small survey at the end to share us your feedback. Thanks again for attending today's webinar, Vision Systems Designer's Dilemma, Build versus buy. Have a great day, everyone, and thank you.